This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Strap on that astronaut helmet and get the blasters going, because today we're going to be traveling a long way, all the way to that red planet, Mars. Today we're talking about Mission Red Planet. This is the newly reprinted version from Fantasy Flight that just came out at the end of 2015. Uh, it's for two to six players now. Uh, it takes 60 to 90 minutes to play. More on that later. But let me show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. Mission Red Planet has played over 10 different rounds, and over those 10 different rounds, there's going to be certain scoring uh, that's going to take place on Mars. Now, what you're trying to do in the, over the course of the game, it's an area control game, so you're going to be trying to have as many guys or the most guys in certain areas, and these will produce resources, which are essentially worth different amounts of points, and those are essentially going to happen three times throughout the game that you'll actually score these. So in general, here, that's what you're trying to do, it's area control. At the beginning of the game, you get to have astronauts of your color. These guys look really cool. Everyone starts with nine identical cards. Each of these are a rule that does a special action. And so everyone gets the same cards, but then on the back, it's the color of your choice. Also, at the beginning of the game, everyone's going to get two secret mission cards. They will choose one to keep, and I'll go over some of these at the later of the game. Now, here's the rockets, and these are going to end up shooting uh, to Mars and placing astronauts from the launch pad up into the different zones in Mars. Uh, what's going to happen is each round, everyone is going to select one of their cards, and they're going to place it face down in front of them. Once everybody's done, the player who has the first player marker, the big counter, is going to start counting down from 9 to 1 in blast-off fashion. Say, starting with 9, then 8, and anyone that has a card of that number flips it up and they'll do a specific action and take some actions. And these actions do different things like allowing you to put astronauts on different rockets, some of them make, let you launch them early, some of them let you, you know, kill people and swap people and do all sorts of crazy things. Now, what happens is, as soon as and there's an amount of people that equal this number on the rocket, now there'll probably be... Uh, more than just mine, but let's just say there's three astronauts here. As soon as it ma matches this number, it launches and it sits right there until the end of the round. But this thing can still, uh, some things allow you to change where this thing's going. It might go to a different place. It might explode. Even though it's launched, some people can make things explode and things like that. So all things can certainly change. This tells you where on the map exactly where these ones are going. Some of them, if you're the first person to go to one, you actually get to choose where it's going. But again, some other people's cars might change where that's going anyway. So that's simply it. Everybody just, uh, you know, plays one card. When their number's called, they flip it over. They take their action. Once all the players have done so, uh, any rockets that have launched will then put the people onto Mars. Any ones that have not launched will stay like this for the next round. And as soon as these launch, those would go to the spot. And then in the next round, a new rocket would come up here and fill this up. So once things are launched, they'll be placing them where those ships are supposed to go. As soon as a person goes to an area that's not uncovered, they uncover one of the three resources in the game. And there's really just three different types. Uh, essentially, let me just show you the three different types. We have ice, uh, and there's two other resources here. Now, over the course of the game, ice tokens are always going to be worth one, the pink ones are always going to be worth two, and these orange ones are always going to be worth three. So you don't really know where they are until someone has gone there. And that would essentially be the end of the round, and then we would just flip this up to round two. Whoever played the last card would take this and start the... Uh, the, the, the count off. Now when playing cards, if people play the same number, the first player and then going clockwise will be the first ones to do that. Now there's also Phobos, which is a moon. This is one of the spots that people can go to on the planes and such. And there's different things that can happen here. It is its own uh, area. So this one actually would have had something there as soon as somebody went there. And that's what you're fighting over in that region. And there's certain cards that allow you to go here. And there's certain cards that allow you to move from Phobos to any other areas because you can go from the moon to somewhere else. And over the course of the game, some people are going to get killed and they all go into the memorial, the Lost in Space Memorial over here because there's certain things that can give you points even if your guys die. Now, in addition to getting some of these cards for your secret mission, there's other ways of getting these cards with some of your uh, action selection uh, people. And some of these might be even more missions. So like, for example, at the end of the game, uh, uh, the one with the most of the Sylvanite, the pink tokens, will get eight points. Or maybe, you know, if you have one, two, three, or four people 
uh, in, in all these red zones, you'll gain one, two, four, seven points. So this will give you a certain amount of, um, you know, uh, extra points if you have a certain amount of people, at least in some of these zones. Some of them are discoveries. And what these do is they actually change an area that's around here. So when someone has this discovery, they can place it on any region like this. And it's a secret special ability that, that, that has to do with one of these regions that it's put next to. And towards the end of the game, you're going to end up flipping these up. And this one says, this token, this, this area produces two more tokens of its kind. Or this one says, each player who has an even amount of astronauts is, is thought of as having no astronauts. Some of them are good or some of them are bad, and you don't really know what they are. There are different actions that you can take to allow you to peek in these and so on and so forth. The last type of card you can, might be able to get is an action card. They do some really special things like taking all your guys from the dead, the, the lost in space memorial and adding to a zone where you have at least one astronaut. So some special actions there as well. Now as the rounds go on, the cards that you play stay out. So I played the secret agent in the first round and the scientist and the saboteur, then the explorer. Now to get those cards back, there's a specific card that you have to play, and that is the Recruiter, where basically his special action is, hey, you get to put one astronaut in a dock ship, and you get to collect all your cards and put them back in their hand. So you get to see what actions people have taken, you know which ones they might not be able to take, and you can plan accordingly. Now when it comes time after the fifth round, you'll have a production uh, scoring, and essentially this is one token. So every area, you'll look at who has the most people there, and they will get one token of this type. And remember, those ones are always twos. So this person would get two, and you'd go through every area, including the Phobos of the Moon, and you would, everyone would get one token of the resource type that's there, whoever has the majority. If it's tied, essentially you would split as much as you could and then leave the remainder there. In this case, in the first round, this is just one token, you can't split it, it would stay there for a remaining round. Now, later on, you'd go through round six, seven, and eight, you'd come to a second scoring. Same thing would happen, but now you're delivering two tokens of this type, and the same thing happens here. Now, when we get towards the end of the 10th round at the end, we come through the discovery phase, and we talked about a little earlier about some of those secret discovery things that are under some of these that change how those score things. All those would be flipped up, and most of them would be activated at that time. And then we do a final scoring production phase, which everything would get now three tokens for whoever's the winner, showing how I did. And then you'd do some final scoring, which is, you know, you'd add up all the tokens you have. There's also a special card here. Whoever has the, the most ice tokens, which is the least valuable, will get an ice monopoly. This is every game. They'd get nine points for having the most of what's least. Uh, you'd add that up. You'd add some special points from some of your mission cards. Uh, and then you add up all the tokens that you have. And whoever has the most is the winner. There is Mission Red Planet. Now, hey, it's designed by Bruno Cathala and Bruno Faduti, two of my favorite designers. So you're probably expecting me to just gush all over this game. Yes and no, let me explain. Uh, let me first uh, confess to you that I had the old version of Mr. Red Planet and had never played it because I traded for it. I just never got to it because of all the review copies. And I finally got the new version and here we go. So I should have played this a long time ago and I didn't, but at least now I got a chance to do so. Let me say what the game really has going for it first, then I'll get to some of the my own personal uh, preferences with this game. The game uh, is a great Euro game. It's totally solid. Uh, simultaneous action selection with uh, um, area control. Okay, It's very thematic. Uh, I can think of very few games that mix those two mechanics together. In fact, none that mix simultaneous action selection, area control, a space theme that's very tightly integrated into the game, can play five or six players, and even with four or five, you can play it in about an hour, maybe a little bit more. So it plays in a pretty quick time. The depth of the game feels deeper than the time that you played allow would allow, you think? You know, you play an hour game, you think it might not be that deep. I feel like this game has a lot of depth going on. Uh, so overall, I think it is a solid game. Now this game has been super hyped by very many popular people in the media world. One that I talked to on the phone today about this. Uh, and, and it got hyped so much and people loved it so much that it got reprinted. And I think it's definitely a, a, a good reason to reprint this because it is a solid game. Now with that being said, uh, for me, this is not like my favorite go-to area control game and it's not going to be my favorite go-to action selection game. But what makes this game really unique and stand on its own is because it meshes those two so well together in a great thematic way. The most fun of this game is counting down 9 to 1, doing the characters, blast off. Now this game does have a decent amount of take that. It has a decent amount of chaos going on. Well, it is designed with Faduti, right? There's going to be that in there. So if you don't like to take that and the and, and sort of that stuff, you might want to shy away from this one. But I will say that there is a person in our group that tends to not like take that aspects. 
And she was okay with it because she could look at her action cards and go, well, at least I know what possibly can happen to my guys and I can plan for it. So even if you don't like take bad actions, you might still want to try this one because it is a good game. Now, for as an area control thing, you know, it, when I think of area control, you know, my favorites are like Tammany Hall, but it's a lot longer. It has a lot of negotiation. I like that aspect better, but it's a lot longer than this game in fairness. Same with Alien Frontiers, is the area control is very similar. You know, the space, it's separated out to different places. You're going there, you're going for area control. Very similar, but again, then it's worker placement is completely different, and that game's definitely longer than this as well. And then you think of, like, Nothing Personal, one of my favorite games, and that's nothing really but action selection with your cards, doing rolls, doing abilities, and area control. It's really the same sort of thing, but again, it takes a lot longer, which again, this game has got its own little niche. 60 minutes, lots of depth, thematic. You know, when I think of area control for games that take about the same time, I think in Small World, which I really like a lot. For, for pure area control, is one of my favorites. It's I wouldn't say it's as deep as this, right? So it's good on t about the same on time, but not as deep. Royals is probably a game that I think is the most closest to this, both in time and depth. And I think I would always personally choose to play Royals more than this. It, Royals has no theme, which is weird, but I still it still grabs me more than this one does. Now, on the role selection aspect of this, you know, I think my favorite in that aspect is sort of Libertalia, that pirate game where everyone's throwing a roll down and you're flipping up, and that plays in the same aspect. So I have like a, a, an area control game and a, and a select and a role selection game that, if I want to scratch that itch, I have games that I like better than this. But again, nothing puts these together like this game does. And finally, Raptor, who's also designed by the same two people, just came out with Action Selection. And interesting there, same amount of characters, nine cards in both games, but in Raptor, you're only drawing three and choosing. I wonder what that would have done in this game if you only had three to choose from. Anyway, uh, overall, I gotta say it's a good game. I see why a lot of people are, are very positive about it. I like certain aspects of it. There's nothing I can say that the game is bad. But in the end, it's not one that I'm going to just be gushing to play all the time because it, it has mechanisms that I like, but I have games that do both of those mechanisms better. I just don't have any that do them both together like this. And that's sort of how I slot this. Solid game, uh, but I have other things that I like better, and that's Mission Red Planet. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com.